This video is sponsored by Brookwells Parts and Accessories. They're helping us to help you to stay technical and keep your Land Rover on the road. Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos once again. Right, so last video we put on the pinion bearings and then set the pinion up in the housing with the uh, shims and the bearing cups. Now I did say that we were going to measure the pinion height today. However, we do have a little bit of a problem. The uh, best way to uh, measure the pinion height, which is the most vital part of setting the uh, pinion up, uh, I don't have the block at the moment. This is the uh, pinion gauge which you can buy from Dincrofts and you get the uh, tool steps of 30.93mm, 38.10mm and 39.53mm. You can see the price is actually quite expensive, £107 including VAT. However, it's not arrived yet, so I messed up here. And just out of a bit of information, if you look here, this is LDV axles, old convoy axles. Uh, GKN191-1, not LRT191-4, and GKN191-2. Now these are specific height gauges. The uh, Land Rover axles, the LDV axles, they're very, very similar and the operation for checking them is exactly the same. Pinion height gauge number or the old gauge number is GKN, I mean, sorry, 18G191-4. So you can see a connection there, can't you? I do have an idea to get round and not spending too much money. You'll have to have a little bit of patience with me. I'm now waiting for the block to turn up. Hopefully it'll be here by the end of the week and the video will be out next week. So continuing on our journey, and we still have a lot to do, we'll concentrate on the condition of the, the differential carrier. Okay, this is the bit that has the differential in and the uh, crown wheel attached to it. Okay, so we have to check the condition of our drivetrain. This is a common fault with uh, all defenders that have um, removable drive flanges. You can see the wear on this. Sometimes it'll strip the splines right off and you lose a drive. This really is unacceptable anyway. You don't want uh, half shafts in this condition. And also the uh, backlash that you'll experience at your prop shaft may well be this gearing as well, the, the differentials, the uh, planetary gears and the sun wheels or the sun gearing. And this basically, there's too much slop in here and it will show up. Okay, so um, we'll take this housing out. We'll take the uh, crown wheel or the, the ring if you like. We'll take that out of the way. Now this bit here, um, actually, if you have big issues with it, we're going to concentrate on looking at it. Now you can see here, this has got a broken pin. The gears have got chewed up. Not very good. Thanks to Evo for that. Uh, there's a photograph of one of these diffs that smashed up. And you can see this here. This has rendered this unit completely unserviceable. It's not like you can weld it or anything. And unless you've got secondhand diffs, they can be expensive. This uh, differential uh, casing is for the uh, Salisbury axle. It's a lot stronger, it's a four pin one, but you can see the price. We're already getting up into the uh, 300 odd pounds mark. So what we have here is the four pin diff. Now this is constructed differently. It also has a thrust washers, which uh, slow down the wear if you like. And basically the whole unit is a lot more robust. You are not going to break this unless you uh, really give it some grief. And uh, it also has um, thrust washers on the uh, planetary gears here as well. You can see that very, very clearly. If it's had good lubrication, it's been looked after well, it will actually serve you a lot longer than the cheaper type of uh, differential carriers that you get on the Discoveries and the Defenders. Okay, so um, we're going to go to Brookwell's site now. I'm just going to go onto the shop and I'm looking, well, let's do something random. A Defender Parts, we're looking at a 1994 Defender and we'll select a 300 TDI one. Okay, so this is how you uh, look for parts for your vehicles on Brookwell's site. And what I'm looking for is something related to axles or transmission. Yep, here we go, front axle. Okay, front axle there, click on that. This will take me through to the subsections that I need to look at. There should be one here, differential. Yep, that's it just here, I'll just show you that. Differential, click on that. 
and what products they have. With Brookwells, you're better off actually ringing them if you want parts. And uh, I just want to show you this. Um, this is the Auto um, Talk or LSD, Limited Slip Diff. Price is about um, 396 quid, so it's uh, it's expensive, but it's not. This is an addition. Now this is a whole unit. Now you already can see where I'm going to. If you have uh, your differential units that, that's screwed, you can just bolt your uh, crown wheel to this, put some bearings on it, and then set it up in your differential. Now. This one will fit front axle for uh, defenders, discoveries, uh, front and rear axles. And there is, on the website you click through, it will give you a description of what this uh, limited slip diff will do, because it's auto-biasing. It's a good addition, and to be honest with you, it's better than having the uh, standard diff. Number DA9011, I'll just quickly Google that. And what I come up with is Britpart, first of all. It's actually an Ashcroft's unit, and uh, Britpart selling it. You can get it through Brookwells. You can see here, this is the image of it. Uh, I'll leave the links below so you can read up about this. This is something that is worth considering if you're having to change the uh, differential carrier. And I'm going to explain in this video um, where you can see the where and what justifies you actually changing the whole unit instead of chucking the whole diff away. You can just chuck this in. Um, there are other solutions as well, but this one is um, quite favourable for us. So we'll just have a look at the image here. You've got that in your head. And we'll just have a look at the final drive unit. You probably already can see where it would fit in. Literally, as I said, you uh, put some bearings on it and then put your crown wheel on and then fit it in, adjust it up, and away you go. Okay, for contacting Brookwells about uh, parts, because they don't have a massive comprehensive list of all the shims and the bearings and the such like, I give them a call. The number's here. Okay, so that's 01626 848 and I'll do that a bit larger for you so you can see that. You're best off talking, first of all, to Brookwells. They've got the specialists uh, there that will help you and uh, guide you through what bits you actually need uh, in conjunction with these videos. Right, so the drivetrain starts at the drive flange, which is bolted to the hubs, if you have a two-piece one fits to the half shaft and you can see that screwed that is worn this is a reason for drivetrain failure or losing drive and uh, yeah what you need to do then is uh, check your half shaft so you're obviously taking them out to get your diff out and make sure the splines are not badly worn you can usually see if they're chiseled and that'll be where it's shiny on the half shaft so on the half shaft it doesn't fit all the way through this is the uh, sun gear Okay, so you can check it where it's been working on and then you can slide it down the shaft where it's not worn to see if you've got play there. There shouldn't be anything too excessive. If it is, then it's possible that you'll have to replace the half shaft and the gearing as well. Now, the planetary gears that work in the housing, there's no shims or thrust washers in this one and what you'll be looking for is a slop in there obviously there will be movement because you need a lubrication in there as i said you can't have interference fits however when you look at this you can see how sloppy it is there was about a sixteenth of a turn on the prop shaft it's excess it's uh, acceptable up to a point however this is not going to be reliable it's just going to wear even further you can see how loose they are in the housing okay and uh, it's worn in three places this is a different uh, differential housing and this uh, gearing is a lot tighter in here this is a, off a, a newer differential it's one that I had spare kept it okay whereas this one I'll show you that it's a lot sloppier so I would write this off I would not call this a reliable unit I would, however, give it to somebody who goes off-roading, use this until they smash it to pieces because they're not very strong. So I've got one if I want to. And now this one is an even better setup. This housing is uh, tight, as it were. There's hardly any play in there at all. Okay, and it's you can see the, the difference between them. 
Okay, there's hardly any movement in the housing, so that's not worn. It's not worn there. Okay, I will actually show you now. I'll strip it out, and then you can see how the the gear fits in the housing, and you'll see where the wear is actually happening. So, circle it off, and then we'll slip the pin out. The way to strip these is to actually turn the whole lot, and then the uh, little planetary gears pop out and then you get your uh, sun gears come out like so okay now the pin the pinhole here is usually a problem if it feels excessively worn then it is excessively worn and it's no good okay now what i would do is check it where it usually wears up on and then uh, where it doesn't wear to see how much uh, play it's got. This is by feel. There's no data at all from the workshop manuals that will tell you how much wear, but it is fairly obvious if you have steps on the pin, okay, that means that that's excessively worn. You can see where it's been wearing, okay. Um, it feels okay. It's not a problem. Now, the uh, faces here, or the running faces, um, you have your teeth which go into mesh, Okay, um, you check those and this as well. This is a wearing surface and so is this, okay. You would check for scoring or uh, any chips or anything like that. You can see it's had something in there that's scored it round once. Now this, um, I was going to show you this because this is quite important. Uh, what I have here is uh, severe scoring I'll just get that so the camera can see that you can see that that has been biting into the housing okay so that is worn and in the housing itself I'll just bring this up to the camera you can see where it's uh, been scored okay you see where the gearing actually fits okay so it's got a thrust face and then down in the recess is also where it wears. Now that is unserviceable in my eyes. I would not use this in a road going Land Rover that you want reliability. I will say that this kit, and you can convert 10 spline to 24 spline. Uh, this is STC 1846. It's about 180 pounds for genuine or 70 pounds if you buy non-genuine. And that's the pin, the gears and the clips. Okay, so anyway, this has to be scuppered. This is not serviceable. So on the bench here, I have another one which I kept just in case. And uh, this was something that had a crown wheel which was smashed. But the housing itself, I did check it over. It's been sitting in the shed for a while. Now, um, as it comes to the planetary gears on the thrust side, you can see that's almost a mirror finish. That's okay. It's not to say it isn't worn, because it will be worn, but you can see it hasn't picked up. And uh, on this side as well, it hasn't picked up any uh, um, anything bad. No lack of lubrication, whereas this one might have suffered from uh, lubrication starvation or had something in it, in the lubrication, which has caused it. It should be more like this. Okay, so that's just the point of the housing itself. You can see here where the wear area is on both sides. Just get into the camera and down in the recess there, it shouldn't be scored either. Okay, so that's where it's running there. It is oil fed. There is an oil feed hole. You can see that. Hang on, that's just in there. These get blocked up. It stops feeding them. Okay, it's an idea to clean these out once you've uh, um, stripped it. Anyway, so I'm going to go on to the four pin diff now. And the four pin diff is a different construction completely. Now the differential unit it has thrust washers on it. So this is going to minimize wear and it's going to save at the housing. Okay, whatever you do, oil only um, reduces friction. It doesn't completely um, stop it. You can see you've got oil feed holes in here which feed that area. Okay, and then we have our sun gear. This is 24 spline again. Okay, fits in there like so. And what I'll be doing is to check how the uh, spigot feels in there. If it's too loose, then the housing is knackered. In this case, it's not, or this half isn't. Again, it's inspecting for any damage whatsoever. The um, 
what they say in the workshop manuals, they don't give you measurements, they just tell you to inspect for wear, and you have to appreciate what wear is to be able to uh, assess it properly. If it's loose, usually it's uh, worn. Yeah. So what we have is the uh, planetary gears. Okay, they have a little bit of play in them, I'd expect that. And then we have our um, thrust cones here, which are on the gears. You've seen this before because it's in the transfer box, okay? It's exactly the, the same um, idea. Again, it's checking for steps on the pins to make sure that they're not badly worn. And uh, to be honest with you, that's a lot better. It's, this is in good condition, okay? What we can do is uh, change these thrust domes and uh, then put it back together. I don't think we're going to have an issue with this, but we need to check all the way over for wear, cracks. I don't think you'll get any cracks on this if it's bent, which I doubt. Any teeth missing or unusual wear. Okay, so um, you have to be thorough with this. Check everything. Okay, don't just expect to look at one piece and uh, think it's okay. You have to look properly. Okay, so all of these are good. I have no idea where this uh, came from. I, I bought an axle and it was in a, an axle. Somebody had put it in because it was a discovery axle I got. Uh, clever move. You can buy these units. They are expensive. You can buy them on eBay if you like. Um, it depends. You really do when you're buying stuff secondhand. You have to go in with uh, the thought it might be damaged. But this one's okay. It's okay. There's not much play in there at all. As I said, you need a little bit of play because you need a lubrication and the oil will uh, take up some of that slack, okay. I use Scotch Bright and uh, because it doesn't really give any scratching, it's okay, however it leaves dust. Um, the oil feed holes really, really do need to be uh, blown out. Don't just expect them to be clean. If you've stripped diff, the housing and it's okay make sure that these are clear this makes the difference between having lubrication in there or not okay so uh, you don't need a lot of lubrication when you're assembling stuff you can use a bit of lm grease or something like that I'm just using a bit of hypoid oil here oh sorry should i say ep oil uh, a little smattering on there uh, so we don't have oil pouring out of everywhere and basically this is quite easy to put back together it's the same as uh, taking it to pieces now um, this is an open diff it's probably one of the weakest uh, differentials you can get in the Land Rover range I'm sure that you've made up your mind that you're going to modify your differential. Not that it makes much difference because um, this, as I said, you can fit different differentials in. I would go for an LSD if I had the money. Right, so you see how I did that? I just assembled it, um, rolled it round and then slipped the pin in, okay, and then put the clip back on. If the clips look stretched, then replace them, because if these clips drop out, the pin drops out, smashes uh, the diff, and you're in trouble then. Okay, so yeah, basically that's it, that's that put back together. For the mating face, the uh, housing to the uh, crown wheel, I used uh, Scotch-Brite, and uh, same thing applies, always mating faces, never dent them or scratch them. So we've got a kit to put this back together with.